I have lots of examples, but I know that you don't want to sit here all night. Uh, I think those two are good ones to start with. We're uh, building a big concert hall. We're going to spend about $120 million on that out of TIF funds, no residential property tax. But we know already that when the city committed to that in our city center public-private partnership, we have now gotten over a billion, that's with a B, a billion dollars of private sector investment. Does that more than pay for our, yeah, sure it does. And that building is going to stand for 500 or more years and it's going to keep economic development, just like the Lucas Oil Stadium or like any of the sports venues. Actually, American Express did a study a few years ago and donated it to an organization called Americans for the Arts that pointed out that investments in arts venues creates about three times as much economic development activity as government investments in sports venues. Um, so we're excited about that project. But that's an idea of some of the things we're doing in Carmel. Of course, we lined all our amenities and these quality of life issues up along the Monon Trail. We're trying to build a city. As I look out the window in the back there, I do not see a mountain. I do not see uh, an ocean. I don't even see a retention pond. Um, I certainly don't see the sun most of the year either. Uh, it's not Napa, California. It's not Florida. And it's not uh, Paris or, or uh, Italy, um, and today, if you've got a tech company, where can you put that company? Anywhere you want to. Um, companies today with communications the way they are can locate literally anywhere in the world. So how do we compete here in central Indiana? We compete, number one, by being smarter, by being more creative, I think, by creating these strategic partnerships, but making our cities where people choose to spend their lives, where people choose, you know, li life is short, as the old saying goes. Uh, you can live anywhere. What's going to make people, especially the people that, that we want to invest in this area, what's going to make them ch choose to live in central Indiana with a thing we call winter, um, with 100% humidity a lot of days in the summer? What's, what's going to make them here? It's the way we compete is a quality of life that's unmatched in any of those other places with better geographic features. That's how we do it. And uh, for a city to do that, to initiate it, it takes strategic partnerships. Um, I've been given the signal from your elected officials doing their job, telling me that I've already talked long enough. So there's probably some questions out there. I think I do get a few minutes to answer questions if anybody has them. Yes, sir. What's new to the stimulus package? About a third, you know, there's a lot of debate whether the stimulus works, is going to work or doesn't work. Ronald Reagan's economist, who's teaching at Harvard now, says it's going to work, but he doesn't like the way uh, the current administration is implementing it. Um, you know, I'm not worrying too much about that. What I'm trying to do is get every, it's our money, I'm trying to get every bit of it back to Carmel that I can. Indiana, you know, we're Midwesterners, you know, you listen to Garrison Keillor's spiel about Minnesotians sometime, you know, he says, we're humble people. Sometimes we don't ask for things. And I think it's important to get to Washington and ask for as much of that money to come back here as possible uh, and get people working. And I'm pretty comfortable with the lo infrastructure part of it because we get to decide what we build and local infrastructure is a pretty Republican idea. So we're, we're going after a lot of the money. We're at about $11 million so far. They used existing federal programs. They didn't create new programs for the most part, a few, but not many. They said, okay, we already have these programs in the Department of Energy. They haven't been funded. We have these programs in the Department of Homeland Security. We have these programs in the Justice Department. We have these in the Transportation Department and funded programs that had not been funded uh, very well. Um, we have a uh, part-time lobbyist in Washington, um, and all he does is government work, has a, a staff of some young people. He works for about 15 cities. We pay a flat fee every year and get as much service as we need. We've done it for 12 years because I need, there's proposals that come out, basically grant notifications, literally every day of the year, usually two or three at least, and we don't have staff that's familiar with it and knows how to do it. So. 
we he's in essence an extension of our staff works for about 15 other cities uh, so we've tried to stay right on the stimulus I've made I think three trips out in the last two months and be going a lot more one-third of it is going to go directly to the states roughly one-third is going to come directly to cities and towns and then the other third is going to be what we call competitive money and I think that's where we can get in we've got good department heads in this city uh, get in and be very competitive I talked to uh, one other a mayor of another city about our size out in California this afternoon and they're announcing they just got 90 million dollars for a flood control project uh, Carmel should be up in the 50 or 60 million dollar range at least and that's where we're trying to get to and, and um, we'll put the money to good use we won't waste any of it here yes sir No, I just want to, no, there's no time to think about anything else, Ashley. Um, I just want to do a good job here, and life will lead where it leads, I suppose. Any?